Now the geometric sequence. Okay, so the geometric sequence is when we uh, take a number. For example, we take number 3. And every consecutive term is found by multiplying with something. So, for example, I can multiply with 2 and get 6. I can multiply with 2 again and then get 12. And with 2 again and I get 24. This is an example of a geometric sequence. And this number that I'm multiplying with, this multiply by 2, this is called the constant ratio. So the constant ratio. <coughs> and we call it a constant ratio because, and we're going to use an, uh, an R to to indicate the constant ratio. We call it a constant ratio because we can find it by taking the second term divided by the first term. A ratio is to divide. The second term, 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. Also, 12 divided by 6 also gives me 2. In other words, I also get 2 when I take term 3 divided by term 2. And consequently, every two consecutive numbers will do the same thing. So um, 24 and 12, or whichever two consecutive numbers I take. And now this brings us to the geometric property. So this is the identifier. Okay, It has a constant ratio. And now for the geometric property is that if I take term 2 and I divide it with term 1 I get the same answer than when I take term 3 and I divide that with term 2. Okay now this can be written in different ways obviously we are assuming that none of the terms are equal to 0 so uh, for example term 1 and term 2 can definitely not be equal to 0 but this can for example be written as if I take term 2 and I square it I will get the same answer as when I take term 1 times term 3. Tell you what, pause the video, see if you can see how on earth did I get this. Why is term 2 squared equal to term 1 times term 3? Let's just test it on this one. Okay, there's term 2. If I square it, I get 36. And that's also the answer I get when I take term 3 times, ter sorry, term 1 times term 3. Okay, so next, what does the geometric sequences general term look like? So let's say we start with term 1 again. Okay, so term 1 is equal to A, whatever A is. Then term 2, I get when I take A and I multiply it with R. And term 3 is when I take A and I multiply it with R again. Oh, sorry, not A. A R. I take this term multiplied with another R. And this goes on. R R R ad infinitum. Okay, which means that here I've got A R to the power one, A R to the power two, A R to the power of three, etc. So this is actually A R. A is multiplied with R no times. Okay. A is multiplied with R once, A is multiplied with R twice, etc. And this is for term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4. Do you notice that if I get to term N, whatever N is, I would have had A multiplied with R how many times? Well, look here, it's one less every time. So it would have been N times, but minus 1. So n minus 1 times. And this is then the formula for my general term. My general term is tn is equal to a r n minus 1. Okay, and where will I get a and r? Well, here they are. Again, if I write it like this, there they go. So let's do a quick example. So let's say I take the number hmm, 4 next number 2, next number 1, next number etc. And I notice, okay, 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. Not a constant difference. Let's try constant ratio. Um, 
actually 2 minus 4, it's negative 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Sorry, went the wrong way around. So 2 divided by 4 gives me a half. 1 divided by 2 gives me a half. And there I see I've got a constant ratio. So I circle the first two in these two number patterns. The first one is my a value, my first term. The next one is my r value. And this one's general term will be tn is equal to 4 times a half to the power n minus 1. There you go.